like, subscribe, and comment. That'd be great. Werewolf, the podcast, can be found now at all good podcasting sites. This video is sponsored by Plop to Drop, the new app from App Store or Google Play. At times, the release from your ass to the water of your poop, and from that, can work out your digestive health. Go find it. Plop to drop. You might have heard about my giant crucifix in my art room. If you've listened to my past stories, you should remember my work where I ripped a live baby from a living woman's womb. It was a beautiful piece of art and that has gone on to several million views on the the wrong pages of the internet. Well, that crucifix was taken from a Polish Catholic church where it came with the Christ on it, who was actually built like Arnold Schwarzenegger. But the creator, I mean the sculptor, not the god, had weirdly given him two left feet. Did Jesus have two left feet? Maybe that's why, he, you know, the Bible never mentions his dancing. This guy, though, this Christ, seemed a very different gold-leafed covered messiah, to be honest. Now, it had her on it. It had Sammy the Sucker in a Jesus Christ pose, the vampire queen that I had captured a few months back in Manchester. She was trying to kill me for killing her brother, who was also her lover. The brother and the lover were the same person or same vampire, who knows. But she'd gotten upset about his death and wanted me to suffer for it. I tried to get away and, and not do anything about it, but I had to end up killing a few vampires and capturing her in the end i mean as i've said go back and listen to the stories i've already told if you excuse me if you go back and, and look for any of the vampire v's werewolf stories then that would make sense uh i now had her she was mine and it was so much fun because she had an ego much larger than mine now that's pretty impressive this thing had been recognized as a goddess a few thousand years ago and now she was my plaything in my art room. To be honest, she was an angry wee thing, but it was so much fun playing with her. Oh wait, oh wait, I, no, no, I, I know what you're thinking. There's nothing sexual going on, nothing rapey or anything. It's really not my style. I like my sex consensual. If they don't want it, what's the point? You have to be a sick puppy to do the raping. I did try it once, I must admit, but I have to say it's not for me. And I gave up and apologised for my actions long before it got past the, the mild fondling stage. It's just not for me. No, I tended to humiliate her, to be honest. I mean, she was immortal and torturing her had been fun at first, but her ability to accept pain and refresh her damaged body made it a little dull after the first few tries. All she did was try to humiliate me back about how shit my torturing efforts were. I must admit it worked significantly, really to the point where it made me not want to do it anymore. When you remove someone's arm and slap them with it, and their response is to take the piss and ask, that, is that all you've got? You know, are you truly harmless? Harmless, get it? It makes no sense to continue. Stealing her freedom and eating my bloody breakfasts in front of this thirsty bitch was much more entertaining. I had her now pinned to the cross and tied and chained. Sorry. A lot of and there, but it was certain that I would not allow this thing to get away in my house. Who knew what she would get up to? If she got free in my home, she would probably try and kill me and stuff. Never mind mess up the carpet and shit. So, so she was firmly bolted to the cross through and around her actual fecking bones. The pain of this didn't seem to bother her in the slightest though. She just seemed to, to want to be free and that was her greatest issue. She also kept telling me that the others... The others, whoever the others were, would find her and, and free her. Well, that would be a fun time if they did. I now knew how to kill or re-kill the undead or dead or whatever they are. I mean, I'd experimented with a couple of other captured vampires, seeing what it takes to kill these fangy fuckers. And it, it's pretty simple, to be honest. You have to remove their head and move it some distance away from the dead thing. Honestly, if you, if you didn't move the head at least two feet away from the body, the body would, like, can reach out and reattach it. Crazy, isn't it? It's just mad. 
Now, I'd tried steaks and burning, but that did fuck all. Sunlight, yeah, sunlight was the best thing to destroy normal vampires. UV light was almost as good. They all, like, burned up in front of you and stuff. Silver did nothing. And sadly, the holy religious shite was not a myth, though. Hmm. Although holy water just made her clothes over temptingly wet. Sorry. I, I often thought the bastards were dead when they were not, and they would come back and frighten the fuck out of me last minute. I had a few close calls in my experiment. She was something slightly different than the rest, though. I mean, she was Semiramis or Samarama, you know, a queen from 830 BC. In the eyes of the people, she'd been a god and a monster, and even then, she was a sh the shit. She murdered hundreds of thousands, probably millions, and led her own armies from the front. She was always the first into the fray. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting wet at the thought of her, so, so slightly different from other newborn vampires. Ultraviolet light and sunlight only caused her, well, I call it mild irritation. She just seemed to be annoyed by it. Mm -hmm. I wonder why the younger versions of her couldn't take it all. There has to be something scientific behind it, but I couldn't be asked to do that level of research. I just wanted an anti-vamp kit around my place that she broke free and make, or her mates found her. I would have the stuff to destroy them quickly or as easy as I can. Well, she was now spitting venom at me from the cross. No, not actual venom, like a like a venomy spitting thing, but like malice. She never lost the element of anger and her ability to monologue her vitriol. I found it fascinating that she could talk for as long as I sat in front of her and her anger never seemed to reduce. I mean, most things sort of run out of energy to do so after a while. Humans tend to have about 45 seconds of anger before the angry little creature seated in the uh, amygdala, is it? Amygdala? Am the, the reptilian part of them or the animal part of them runs out of energy and gives up. She was amazing, and though she did repeat herself an awful lot, it was terrific the way she kept the hate and hurt coming. I mean, she was brilliant. I had tried to gag her once or twice to stop this shit from continuing, but she had chewed up the ball gag, and the material gag was not enough to stop her from talking. She just kept going. I just used to sit and, like, listen and, and, and kind of watch her as I waited for that fateful day when she would hopefully... Shut the fuck up so I could get a word in edgeways. I was I was super impressed with how she had all this energy So I, I wanted to talk with her and, and then I learned all that got her shit from Her spewing her hoop with the words, but it would have been nice to actually ask her a few questions instead of just getting like Full-on lectures all the time. It came one Saturday morning while I was watching Scooby-Doo on my phone as I listened to her rant the coffee was good, and I'd been out for dinner last night having a four-course, all-you-could-eat at a local family home, so I felt refreshed and content in the moment. Finn and I always have a little ritual where we watch the kids' Saturday morning cartoons when we can. We particularly love Scooby-Doo. They are the best because the reality of life is seen there. Well, I suppose it's not the reality of life, but it's the one that those who would not want to believe in monsters and magic believe in. Humans on this show are the worst, and always the seat of the things that happen. And I'm afraid, kiddies, that's real life. Humans are the worst. It is always the high school coach, the janitor, or the circus performer outed by those pesky kids. It is never the monster that they are led to believe that it is. There are monsters out there, and listening to a talking dog will lead you to your own thoughts on mental health. I like that reality, and I really wish it was true. Fend loves Scooby particularly. I think they thought of me as his psychotic shaggy. Do not get him started about Scrappy, though. We both hate that little shit. Anyway, a digression there. We were just finishing the program where the pesky kids had followed the plans of the guy who ran the water slide when the background noise of her utter bile just stopped. She was out of breath and dangling from the cross. She still wore the habit of Mother Teresa that had bought from some dead bloke on eBay. It was an experiment in itself to see if the habit would have an effect on the vampire lady, but... It had done nothing for her but made her look like a kinky nun from a porno where the chicken and the feather get mixed up, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I think it affected me much more than it did her, to be honest, and it was not a bad habit. Get it? <laughs> bad habit. It's got like two meat men. I mean, habits can be very fetching, but Mother Teresa's was not sexually exciting on Mother Teresa, but on Sammy... It just was. Uh, anyway, she now dangled from the many things that held her on the cross and moaned. 
I had my cup halfway to my mouth as Fen told me he thought the dude from the water slide was a pedo. It, he had no decent argument for this point. I mean, the whole Scooby gang were, the, you know, were within legal age, in my opinion, were they not? I'm not sure, to be honest. Maybe not Scrappy. We both turned and looked at how the, how the now limp body on the cross, and I, I sipped my bitter brew as I considered her. Her eyes were closed, and she was breathing heavy. Mm, I thought this might be a trick because of me being me and her being her, you know, draw me in and then do something nasty. So I asked Fenton to go and check her out to ensure that she should not work herself loose or anything. She had been a, a bit of an ass to subdue in the first place and it was pretty early on in Saturday morning. I would prefer not to have to go to war before I'd finished my first cup of coffee of the day. She, he, I mean, he wandered over and had a look around her crucifix place. It had been a while since I checked her out, to be honest. I was just mesmerised by her energy and to keep speaking, so I, I had to be sure she would not leap off the cross and then fucking brutalise me. Another fantastic fact you may not know is that vamps do not shit or wee. Crazy, huh? Well, she had not done so in weeks, so I just assume they don't unless they got like one big one like a sloth have you ever seen a sloth have a shit honestly youtube it she also had not got smelly and her hair had not grown she just still looked perfect Fucking bitch. although when when she does check out her social media accounts is she never goes to i mean she must have to find some spare time in the day to find friend face check it or in Satogram or whatever it is. Anyway, sorry for always going off track and being sidelined by these things popping into my mind as I speak. Um, she was still very held, very well held according to the posit, and then she moved. Only her head, but it made me and my invisible and untouchable wolf saw flinch. And then she started talking again, but this time it was no rant that she was giving me. I can see your little dog friend sniffing around me, Will. Shit. She knew my name well. That was new and a little bit of concerning. Could she read my mind? Fen was also a little shocked and uncomfy knowing he could be seen. So he sent a message to me through telepathy which we shared. If that is true, Will, get her to tell you what I am doing now, he said. The foolish animal is touching his nose with his right paw. She quickly said. I stopped drinking my coffee and placed the cup on the table to try and work out what the fuck was happening. Oh, so you can see Fen and hear what he is saying to me then. It took time for me to notice, but over the weeks I noticed him more and more. And then today he revealed himself to me. I can now see the big black. Dog. Wolf, put it in Fen. Dog, she reiterated, showing an overly sexy, fang filled smile of mirth at Fen's response. I could see that the posit now felt a bit stupid from butting in, but this was new ground we were walking here. No one had ever seen Fen apart from me and other werewolves. <sighs> I can swallow what you can call maybe magic and it all becomes apparent to me eventually. I can smell and feel your level of concern that I am a dangerous creature for you to maintain. That is good that you have that respect or else you would already have been dead to be honest. You have no idea what you're holding here. I am a god. I played with a cup on the countertop giving it all my attention and doing the usual waiting for her to stop. I generally thought she was going to go back into her innate sort of inane lecturing, but she, she didn't do so. I was actually going to get to communicate with her. Okay, well, Fen thinks she's still pretty secure on that cross. I think that it can contain you, so I'm not so worried about what you are, I said. I do respect you and your power, and yeah, of course, I'm a... I am a bit nervous because you're a god and, and well, you want to fucking kill me. I'm, I'm not a dafty. I don't want to die quite yet. My bookie list needs completing first. I have been waiting and making time to read you and your little pet here so that I can make my escape. I am going to allow you to let me go, Will. Oh, and no, I will not walk away and let you be. 
I am going to kill you. And if you help me, it will be quick and painless. This is what I believe they call a blessing from a god. I could feel her try to force her glamour on me. It was so powerful, it was difficult to stop my body from walking toward her and doing what she wanted. Luckily, I had Fen to shout at me and bring me back to reality. I smiled at her and clapped a few times. Whew! That was so very good, you almost got me there. And she joined in with my laughter. I will keep trying, Will, and I will get you one day, she said through her laughter. She was mesmerising, but I realised that she was partly causing that infatuation in my mind. Again, she stared at me, and this time put significant coercive power into her word. Release me. Now. Fuck, I said, leaping to my feet. Fuck, that was so good. Wow, you are the shit, Sammy. Now on my feet, I folded my arms and looked at her. See? What we have here is a classic Mexican standoff. I mean, neither of us is going to win this battle. You are completely at my mercy. And to this, she laughed. Well, you are, even if you don't admit it. If I release you, or if you escape, then you're going to fucking kill me. She nodded. I, I really should kill you, should I not? Again, she nodded. But I can't, I smiled. Y you're too fucking awesome to die. Honestly, you're one of the best things I've ever met. It's just a shame that... We've gotten to this point. I truly wish that we could be friends. It would have been so much fun. She lifted her head and smiled. Oh, we can be friends more if you wish. Her eyes burned a beautiful violet and I fell into them. A moment later, I woke up transformed into my werewolf form and was gently smashing my head with considerable force against the nearest white-tiled wall. Fen was now in me and in my head, shouting at me to wake the fuck up and get a fucking grip. I smiled and stopped the head banging, and behind me there was laughter. I got you there, my little friend. You cannot fight me forever. Your little doggy will not always be able to save you. Are you okay? Will, Ben asked. You lost it there. She almost had you. We transformed back to the human and the posit, and I sat, sat and kind of looked at him with sad eyes. This was a shame. She was one of the most incredible things that the world had created. She was so powerful and so beautiful but there was no way I could allow her or anything to have that level of control over me. I turned to, to look at her, and her eyes met, and, and the smile left her eyes. She saw in mine her death. She gambled, and to be honest, she'd lost, and there, there would be no more chances for her. There would be no more time for her to get stronger and gain control. I walked over to her, and as I did so, I invited Fenrir to enter me. By the time I reached her head, I was the giant werewolf. A black demon in the night, my amber eyes fixed upon the purple irises before me. I held her chin in my right paw and sniffed her. She smelt incredible. Sex and strength oozed from her. She knew what she was well, she knew what was gonna happen. A tear came into that beautiful crease around her left eye, and it ran from cheek to chin. It was blood. And it was the second to last action of the great vampire goddess. I figured she could now hear me talk in my head, so I, I did all I could. I, I sent her a truly felt apology for what I had to do now. I'd, I had no choice. She lifted her chin and remet my eyes, and although not saying anything, her simple nod told me all. She knew it had to be. We both couldn't exist in the same world. I lifted and saw that beautiful creature's head from its body. She made no noise. I then held her head and looked into her eyes as she passed. I, t I took her head back to my seat at the counter and, and changed back into my human form and maintained eye contact. It felt right to watch her go. When I knew she'd gone, I broke eye contact and picked up my cold coffee and drank down the bitter dregs. The bitter dregs matched the bitterness of her passing.